Whoa, wait, stop. Listen, lis listen to my tale of mistakes. I did not read the instructions on this bottle, so the first run through that I tested this glaze on went horribly wrong. In fact, everything ran off the shelves, everything ended up pitting, everything came out horribly, horribly wrong. Turns out you are supposed to use this glaze in a very, very specific way, and the instructions are on the bottle, but you know, I'm uh, a middle-aged male, so I don't read instructions. Akin to how most people would use crystal glazes, where you layer down and you make sure that you don't put it on the inside and outside of anything. The recommended way you're supposed to use this glaze is three layers on the top and then layer down while only putting about two layers on the bottom. You're also not supposed to use this on the inside and outside, which means the traditional way that I usually use glazes on this channel is kaput. I can't just pour it on stuff like I did the previous time I tested this and it went horribly wrong. You essentially have to brush this stuff on, on top of the fact that you have to layer down. Also I have a friend of mine who's using this right now and he had suggested putting your liner glaze inside your pot first letting your pot dry so the water evaporates throughout the pores of the clay body, and then brushing this stuff on the day after. So if you pour this on like I did the first go around, it will end up ruining your shelves, pitting, and ruining a lot of your products. I still have a couple of them here actually, and they, uh, they look cool, but this is just a cool pattern of a bunch yeah, of pitting. I, I mean, I messed up, like I really, really messed up the first time I tested this. So in this video, we're gonna be putting a liner glaze inside of some of these pots, and then we're going to be brushing on all of the tests that we do. Simultaneously, we're gonna be doing combos because you can't really put a liner glaze in something without having a little bit drip over the edge usually. So, um, yeah. And as we usually do on this channel, let's talk about what we're putting in the kiln before we put these in. This is a porcelain clay body cup. It's a tester that I made quite some time ago knowing that I would be doing this video. This is pure porcelain. On the inside, it is glazed with Lynette's opal. This is a glaze from a John Britt book that I love very much. And on the outside is CO-8 Dark Star. You're gonna see some type of overlapping with the glazes here. So this right here is the Lynette's opal, while this down here is Dark Star. And this little bit right here is an overlap. So you might see a little bit of dripping because I think all of these Cosmos glazes are akin to crystal glazes. I have some theories about them, but of course the company can't confirm anything because then I would know what's in it and I, you know, company secret. This one here is Frosted Mint from the Clayscapes company. We've been using this glaze quite often. I love it, especially on brown clay. On green clay, it still comes out fantastic. But the overlap here is going to be CO-8, this cosmic dark star that we have here. But just as we're doing with the others, you're gonna see an overlap of this green glaze along with CO-8 right on the lip right here, while the rest of it is layered down as suggested on the bottle. And these two here are my Lumos glaze with CO-8 layered on the outside. I accidentally did some drips on the inside and I was like, you know what? We're just gonna go with it. You might even find that I'm, I'm gonna put more right here later on off camera, but I, I kind of want to see the interaction in between these two because I have some theories about them coming out real nice and dippy. Okay, with that being said, let's put these in the kiln.
Okay, now that everything's out of the kiln, let's take a look. Before we take a look at everything, I want to tell you that I have done a massive amount of experimentation with this glaze specifically. I have done probably around 10 pieces, about three glaze loads, and it's easily taken an entire level of my kiln each and every time. I experiment with these, so we have a lot to show you today. Firstly, let's take a look at the stuff that succeeded. This here is a dragon fruit clay body with just two or three layers of dark star on top. Before we move on, I want you to notice two things. Number one, this is a dragon fruit clay body. So this clay body has these little specks in it that come through the glaze. I'm pretty excited about this because that means that I can use dragon fruit with this clay body. And that's a good thing for me. It has more versatility with other clay bodies. The second thing is that the instructions clearly say on the bottle that you should not put this in with a liner glaze or else it will pit. I have found that there are a very few amount of these Cosmos glazes that will work with a liner glaze, which is kind of necessary to make functional product seen as the glaze is technically food safe. So this is one of those ones that it worked on. I don't know if the chemistry just worked out, but I do have this Clayscapes glaze lined on the inside of this Cosmos glaze right here. Next time I should do an entire layer because this little space right here, this little metallic space here with the mint green and the and the cosmos dark star is is gorgeous. I would like the entire thing to be in this, to be honest with you. Next, let's take a look at our mixed clay bodies. These two do have the liner glaze in them, but they were just an experiment to see if I can get away with using two layers instead of three or four. And I can't. You totally can't. This thing needs to be laid on at least three or four layers in order to have those micro crystals that you would get inside the glaze in the first place. If you don't, you essentially just get like a black body. This essentially just looks like some type of amber brown. This is not good. And I really wish I would have done the entire thing because at least this looks better than just plain old brown. But the liner glaze of my Lumos seems to be doing pretty well even though this glaze is not supposed to go with a liner glaze. A little potter tip here, I know that the entire point of not having a liner glaze is so that the clay body itself doesn't get oversaturated with the glaze, and if the glaze gets oversaturated, sometimes it pits. I know that. So what I generally do to stave off this problem is that I will put a liner glaze inside of something and then leave the product out for about two or three days until all the water has evaporated out of the porous clay body. At that time, I will then turn it over and apply the rest of the glaze. This way I know that the clay body isn't oversaturated. And that's what I do with most of these products. That might be a reason why the high majority of my stuff is working with a liner glaze is because I use that trick. Long story short, I put my liner glaze in, I wait for it to dry a couple days, especially in the summer, it takes about one day. And then I put the glaze that you're not supposed to put a liner glaze with, on top and it usually works out just fine in fact worked out two even three times that being said i did mix this glaze with a bunch of other stuff that i was not supposed to mix it with and it it did not like it this glaze in my experience is not very glaze friendly it does not like to work with other glazes it doesn't like to work if you put it inside with a liner glaze it doesn't like to work unless you use it the exact way that the bottle says it ought to work. And it does work in that very specific way. This here is essentially another two layer. This was another experiment to see if it would work on a white clay body because these ones here were a darker clay body. So I wanted to see maybe the chemistry of the dark clay body was messing up the effect. So I did it on a porcelain white clay body. And nope, it didn't really work. This really cemented the fact that I need to put at least three layers on in order for this glaze to work. And I do mean at least three layers. On top of that, I've mixed it with a bunch of other glazes and it, it straight up does not like other glazes the high majority of the time. I found one good combo with this glaze and the rest of them essentially failed. Do you remember the bowl I showed you earlier? This one right here with the Clayscapes glaze and a little bit of that dark star on the outside? Turned out pretty good, right? This ain't too bad, especially this little piece right here. Well, I decided since this came out so good in the second load, that I would do an entire cup with this thing, but a little bit in reverse. This here is the Frosted Mint from Clayscapes, but with the Dark Star on the very top. Granted, I put a lesser form of it right here, so maybe one layer, as opposed to this up here, which is about three layers, and it worked out okay. It, it did an okay job. I'll take this over this pity body any day of the week, but it still, the, the margin for error is so low that you cannot depend on it to do this every time, but this up here, 
happened way more often than not. Now, I feel like thus far this glaze is not very user friendly, so I decided to use it on a couple of items the exact way that the bottle says it ought to be used. And it came out really well on some larger vases of mine. This is really nice. This is magnificent. I will say though that there's no glaze on the inside, so technically it's not food safe, which is why I chose to use it on a vase. No one's eating out of a vase unless you're a, a, a savage. Like you're just you're just you're just better than the rest of us, really. And on top of that, I did have to follow the instructions on layering it down. So when I put this on, I put like four layers up here, three layers here, and two layers here. And it didn't run as they promised. It it really didn't run. It worked out really well. I even put a little clay cookie, so I make a couple of these every now and then whenever I test crystal glazes, where I put something like this on this, and then I fire it like this. Just in case it runs, it runs into this small little reservoir where I can just chip it off with a chisel or whatever. But it didn't do that, I just pulled this right off, so it didn't run that much. But I will say, if you do more than four layers, this glaze 100% runs just like the rest of the Cosmos glazes. And I really wish the sunlight wasn't in the perfect position right now to give me a glare through my window. Although there is one beautiful combination I accidentally found with this glaze. This here is a double hump Japanese form gourd with CO8 dark star and my Lumos glaze on the very top. It is beautiful. The entire porcelain body is glazed exactly how Amico asked me to glaze it on the back of the instructions with the bottle. This entire thing doesn't have a glaze inside of it. It is just four layers, three layers, two layers, it didn't run. And on top of that, I put a very small one layer of Lumos on the very top and it came out beautifully. Truly a magnificent glaze. Unfortunately, finding this combination came with a myriad of mistakes. I didn't get any crystallation on this first one I showed you. I didn't get any crystallation over here. And of course, these are the ways you're not supposed to use the glaze body. But I'm so used to Amico being a tried and true mistake proof kind of glaze company. Like I abuse the glazes all I want and they usually come out exactly how they say on the bottle. I put water in them. I put them at cone five, cone six cone seven i have some work at cone four just because i want to do some experiments they mix with almost every glaze that i have they're very 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 user friendly this glaze here is not user friendly whatsoever if you do not follow the instructions to the t you're either going to get lucky with some of the other glazes you have in your repertoire or you're going to get pitting bubbling and it's going to fail and run on you and i have plenty of mistakes to prove that this here is my Randy's Red Glaze mixed in with CO8 Dark Star. You can see that it kind of tried to form some crystals in the glaze, but it didn't get too far before pitting horribly. And the entire thing turned brown, as many things do with Randy's Red. I even tested it a second time. On the second run, the same exact result came out. This thing pitted, it has bumps, little bruises in it. It's, it's, it's not a great thing to have. And on top of that, it ran both times, even chipping the entirety of the foot off of this bowl right here. I was lucky to get it to run right here, but it took the entire foot with it on this one right here. And then of course I put it on a brown clay body, but I dumped the entire thing on instead of brushing it just because I wanted to see what would happen. And um, it, it pitted a lot. It did exactly what it said it would do if I mistreated the glaze. Usually I pour Amico glazes on and they come out far superior to what they would on a brush result. I have many videos to prove this. This um, did not do that. This is the only glaze I've ever used from Amico to fail underneath me just pouring it straight on. I will say though, Amico, if you're watching, this looks awesome. If you could somehow make it food safe with a liner glaze. If you made a glaze that did exactly this all the time, 
and I put a liner glaze, like a white glaze inside of it to make it food safe. And then I had this on the outside on purpose. This, this is a fashion statement. This is gaudy. I love this. This is actually very, very attractive to me. And I want to make it very clear. I did not follow the instructions on the bottle. This is not how you're supposed to use the glaze, but I must experiment to find the limits of the glaze itself. And this is one of the beauties of that is if I could do this on purpose, or if Amico made a glaze that did this every single time with instructions, I would buy it. I would buy it, put a liner glaze inside of it, and I'd sell it, and it'd be food safe, and, and it would be gorgeous. Look, we can do a commercial right now. Amico, zombie edition, ooh la la. I even did a secondary white test style just to see if I can get away with it a second time, and I could not. It run, it chipped off an entire thing. I have, I have tons of footage of me just chipping off my stuff and breaking these things off of my shelves from the pure abuse I have put this glaze through. But this glaze couldn't handle it either, whether it was on white or brown clay. It pit, it bubbled, it boiled, it blistered. And the only way you can essentially use this glaze is to brush it on and follow the instructions like the bottle says. There's some of you right now who are like, yeah, no, duh, Dante, things don't work if you don't follow the instructions. No, that is untrue. Amico is such a good company that I have never followed the instructions and I've come out with amazing things, far better than what they show on the bottle most of the time, every single time. I have almost never followed the instructions and I've always come out with better results. This is the only glaze that that has ever happened with. And I have videos and pictures to prove it, which is wild. But I suppose for this one case, we're gonna have to follow the instructions. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today for the review of CO8 Dark Star from the Amico Company, from their new line of Cosmos glazes. You know, I didn't get the result that I really wanted on the bottle, but I got some pretty good results with enough experimentation. I think this is purely a case of me and other people probably just being spoiled by Amico. Amico is such a user-friendly and very agreeable glaze company that I can essentially do whatever I want with their glazes. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I put I put water in their glazes, I do it after a video so I don't mess up the results, don't worry. But their glazes come out super thick sometimes. So I put about this much water in every single bottle after I open the bottle first time. I mix their glazes with other company glazes, I mix their glazes with bases that I know I shouldn't be mixing them with, I mix the glazes together like the juice itself, I pour them on, I almost never brush them on, I almost never follow the instructions, and they have been working for the last 8 years of my life, ever since I've been buying Amico glazes. This is the very first time that that has not worked for me, and I do think it is a case of me just being spoiled. But again, thank you Dirty Parts for joining me today. If you want any more Cosmos glazes to be reviewed, leave it in the comments below. I've already played with a couple of them, and just spoiler alert real quick, this is probably the least user-friendly one out of the bunch. I've been doing the same experiments that I showed you today with the other Cosmos glazes, and for some strange reason, they work out better than this one. Even though the instructions say don't use a liner glaze and make sure you layer down and do this and do that, I didn't do that with any of the other ones, and they worked out fantastic. Remember to click all the YouTube buttons, and I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. Thank you for your patronage. I'm not even gonna lie to you, I just did this little moon face as an experiment for this glaze specifically, and I don't really know what to do with this, so I'm gonna put it on my website for like 30 bucks.